Mike Stone, uh, you're on This Week in Startups. Hi, thanks for having me on, and thanks for a great show. Oh, thank you. Uh, how long have you been listening to the show, may I ask? Uh, I've listened to every single one. I started at around five, but I went back and listened to them all. That is fantastic. Yeah. And can I ask, how do you listen to it? Do you listen to the audio, the video, on your computer, on your iPod? What, what's your consumption pattern for Twist? Well, I listen to it on my G1. I uh, subscribe oh. to it on Dogcatcher and, and just kind of check for updates around Friday and then you know download it and listen to it whenever I have a time. The, the G1 Fine. is the Google phone, the HTC G1, is that correct? Yeah, correct. And so it has a, an iPod catcher on it? Well, it's, a, it's an application called Dogcatcher. <laughs> Dogcatcher. Uh, it's oh. really cool, and that's how I listened to Twit initially, which is also how I first heard of you. Ah, so... You use Dogcatcher and it downloads the podcast. Does it download them over the uh, over Wi-Fi or does it download it over like the uh, the cellular phone network, like three G? You can do it over three G or <gasps> the wireless, whichever. Wow! You want. See, this is the thing about the iPhone and the AT and T relationship, which is so <laughs> horrible. The iPhone would be a perfect device for downloading podcasts, but th there's no way to download a podcast on the iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't use the iPhone much, but yeah, I, you know, I, I, I've heard people have some issues with it. Yeah, I mean, you can download Strings. it to your iTunes, but it doesn't, they don't want to clog up the AT&T network That's right. with downloads. So it's, once again, uh, AT&T fail. No offense to AT&T, <laughs> but AT&T fail. I love, I love Android. It's, it's been great to me. Yeah, and they have a new one coming out, the HTC 2, or is it G2? What are they calling it? Um, well, I, I heard of, I, I saw one that just came out, I think, but it doesn't have a keyboard, so I'm waiting uh, for the next one that has a keyboard, mm. and I heard it's actually going to be by Samsung. Ah, mm. I got to get one of these phones and just at least play with it, because I'm a BlackBerry guy, and I use the iPhone, and I want to try this one out. So, uh, you have a question. <laughs> yes. Um, so, in my spare time, I've been working on a project, and uh, in the domain of the project, there's a really big competitor with, like, Google-level Google Mindshare. And on top of that, there's some other competitors that are much smaller, but not nearly as the mind share. Uh, and they have uh, they have products similar to what I want to produce, mm. me and my uh, the, my partners. <coughs> right. Um, but uh, so my question is, how do I evaluate my idea that I'm developing, and whether it can overcome the the mind share of the big company and the products that the smaller ones are developing? Wow, this is a good question. Uh, it depends on. Now, did you say exactly what the space was in? You have a, I have it. No. Oh, okay. Can you give us an idea of what space it's in in terms of vertical? Is it a web-based product? Is it B2B, B2C? Is it search? It, it's a web. It's a web-based uh, service. Okay. Um, and uh, it's it's for general consumers. Okay. Um, well, here here's the deal. Uh, you can assume uh, that you will have competition if it's a good idea, right? Any good idea is going to be thought of by many people. So are people, or there's already startups going after the same space? Yes. Actually, we, we uh, recently looked around for what else is there, and some of them look like they're tackling the problem much like we want to, but not right. quite the same. And they're, okay. uh, they look like they're listening to their users really well, which is also what we want to do. Right. Okay. So you've got a good competitor out there who's venture-backed, uh, I assume, or somehow backed uh, and then yeah they uh, they have s some friends and family uh, capital of a fair amount from what I read yeah and uh, so there's one of those players and then you are any of the big boys doing it yet Yahoo AOL Google's Time Warner's whatever I don't think they're tackling it right. um, not directly anyways uh, they have products that may help with it but right. not not directly I don't think okay so it sounds like it's a good idea somebody else has it they've been executing for a little bit they have a little bit of capital uh, and so you will be the second person or third person to address the space. That's not like you're so far behind. Um, and most uh, spaces have two or three winners. So if you look at search, if you look at um, you know any number of spaces, there's, there's, there's two people usually. You know, there's a Coke and a Pepsi. Sometimes there's one dominant player, Windows. But Apple's still making a good living and they've been coming back. So it is possible and that you could be the the Microsoft or the Apple in this race, uh, if, you, if you look at it like a two-horse race, or the Google and the Yahoo in the search race. So uh, there's definitely a possibility there, but you want to know what? How to, how to know where you stand in terms of competition? Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little worried that the mindshare is too big. I mean, uh -huh. with, this, with this problem space, if you think of doing this, this task, uh, 
Right. They are the ones that most people will think of. Right. And so I think the competitors are having that problem, too. I mean, I hadn't even heard of the competitors until we did right. some, some deeper searching. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one. I mean, it, it really depends on if you think you have the wherewithal to fight the fight for three, four, five years, right? And that's mm -hmm. both in terms of capital and in terms of your own personal stamina because it's not going to be, you know, if there's people already in the space, it's not like it's going to take you a year uh, to just catch up to them and, and beat them. Uh, it may take you multiple years. And so that, that, that you have to answer that question very clearly. Uh, do you have the personal passion for the project to fight it for five years? If you do, and this is the most important idea to you, and you have the investors uh, lined up to help, and you think you have a better way to sort of catch the mouse, a better mousetrap, uh, then sure, go for it. I mean, if you think about the video space, YouTube was not the first video site. Uh, Google was not the first search engine. Uh, you know, uh, Apple didn't make the first MP3 player, right? Rio made the first one. Uh, so you, being first means sometimes you get all the arrows when you go up the hill and, you know, somebody else can come in and they might have a way to sort of solve the problem in a way that you don't. So I highly recommend um, going for it if you think you have a better system, like Steve Jobs thought he had with the iPod, you have the wherewithal, like say Steve Jobs did or Google did, uh, and you personally have that passion uh, for it. And so do you have the passion for it to do it for five years? Do you have the wherewithal and do you think you have a better mousetrap? I think I do. Yeah. Uh, my, my question would be, do, uh, you ha do you have the thought leadership? Sorry. Yeah, so do you, uh, go ahead, say it a little louder. So yeah, um, I mean, do you feel you have the thought leadership? Do you see, do you feel like you have a vision that is a, uh, more extended than what your competitors have? They have barriers, so coming from behind, what you need is an angle on this problem right. that you think you are the best qualified person in the world to go address. Then you can conquer mountains, right? right? Okay, well, I, I think we have a, a different angle that might uh, provide a different useful feature for the uh, or way to tackle a problem for the users so maybe that'll work yeah and do you have a is there a uh, flaw with your competitor is there something with your competitor that's their Achilles heel like they charge customers or they only do you know uh, they only allow the videos to be seen on their site they don't allow syndication maybe you can find some something that is their strength and turn it into their weakness you know what I'm saying uh, well, uh, there's definitely plenty of flaws in the big competitor. That's why these other competitors are, uh, are springing up, actually. Got it, got it. There's it, no way we can know what this is, right? <laughs> are you comfortable saying what it is? or? Well, I, I, I think I'm comfortable telling you who the big competitor is. Okay, yeah, tell us who the big competitor is. It's Evite. Okay, sure. Uh, so Evite is uh, definitely a 800-pound uh, gorilla in the space. They, uh, it's pretty uh, ugly stuff and uh, it hasn't been developed too much yeah. in a long They're time. It hasn't static. really been developed. It's pretty stagnant. Uh, and then there's um, uh, Jonathan Abrams from Friendster fame is now doing an Evite type system. So there's a I think that's, that space is ripe. Uh, yeah, you should just go right in there and, and try to innovate if you've got a better mousetrap. Absolutely. Um, cool. And actually, I had an idea to build a community. I was wondering, yeah. do you think uh, making it open source and kind of building a community that way might have a good potential? That's possible. Uh, if people thought that they could have an, the, the, the invite system on their websites, um, sort of like, you know, you can blog on Blogger, but you can't put Blogger on your site, but you can with WordPress, you know, that kind of a thing. So you could take mm -hmm. the WordPress approach to it and let the community help develop the software. Sure, that could be a great angle. That's the perfect example. Like, Evite's never going to open source their product. They're never going to let people put it on their site. You know, they're, they're going to want it all on their domain name to get their traffic up. So, yeah, that's a definite possibility. Okay, great. Great. Awesome. Well, good luck with it and uh, keep us in the loop. And uh, where are you based? I'm actually in, uh, I'm in Sunnyvale. Oh, perfect. Uh, what are you doing September 14th and 15th? I don't think I'm doing anything. Would you like to come to the TechCrunch 50 conference as my guest? That would be awesome. Okay, so there we go. Can we get him a ticket to TechCrunch 50 uh, and make sure you come by and say hello? Cool. Thank you very much. And next time, you've got to get this done in time to launch at TechCrunch 50, maybe next year, September 2010. 
I'm hoping to launch before that, but if not, okay. then I'll, I'll definitely shoot for it. Well, then we have to do another TechCrunch 50 conference. Tyler, take a note. We'll do one in February. Then. Okay. Well, have it ready for February. We'll do another TechCrunch 50 conference so that you can launch at it. Cool. All right. Great talking to you, Mike. You've been watching This Week in Startups. To watch the full episode, click here. To check out some other shows from This Week in, click here.